My name is Boldi Jarbenchat, uh, and I'm from the long, long name uh, Budapest University of Technology and Economics, Department of Telecommunications, Laboratory of Cryptography and System Security, which is not even true because the department has renamed to Department of Networks, Ser Network Service Systems and Services. But so, anyway, in short form, I'm for Boldi from the Crisis Lab, and I prefer to use this one. Uh, I will talk about. Uh, um, you know, I, I made quite a few presentations about uh, different uh, targeted malware attacks, and it gets boring, especially if I repeat all of them and, and you already heard of them. Uh, so uh, I, I found s some topic that is not uh, disclosed too much, so uh, it was, there was no uh, big public presentation about that, and, and now I can reuse this material to show it to you. Uh, this was a kind of uh, interesting research about uh, Everybody tell, uh, told about that uh, uh, the, the big problem with targeted attacks and malware-based attacks is that the adversary can take our tool and use it against us, especially if it is not known, and zero-day attacks and malware that is not known by anybody. But what is the technical feasibility of this? So uh, beyond just writing uh, things in the press, let's try it. Uh, let's try to abuse Duku Flame and similar stuff, especially Stuxnet, but Stuxnet is more complicated, so I, uh, finally I did not make that. But let's, let's uh, make such kind of uh, investigation and, and find it out uh, if it is possible or not, and, and what are the uh, technical burdens, what are the good things, what, what, what is the, ba uh, the bad about that, uh, uh, how to do that. But first of all, uh, uh, just for some introduction, so uh, I guess everybody knows here about the, the famous malware Stuxnet that was used against the Iranian nuclear uh, program, especially uh, the, the uh, uranium centrifuges in the, the Natanz uh, refinery uh, to break down and so on. So just one year later, uh, we uh, discovered another malware. Actually, a, a company asked for our help because they already recognized that something bad is happening in their system, but they could not, uh, could, so, so they asked for, for help to, to be more efficient because they, they are, of course, they have some rules, they, they know what to do, but uh, if there is something bad happen, happening, then it's better to, to check by uh, as many people as uh, it, can, it is possible. But the main, main goal for this operation was to recover normal operations and not to find out what was the tool. So this was just a partial investigation. We were interested, okay, but things are so strange here, so uh, what, what is happening? And finally, we found uh, some parts of the mother. Of course, I can t talk one hour about that, but we have lots of time after the presentation, so I, I will, I, I'm happy to share the details. But now, in very shortly, uh, we found uh, the new malware, which we call Duku, because uh, it was uh, using fine names beginning with DQ, but it was also fun because Duku count in Star Wars and whatever. We also checked Google if there were any other similar names for malware, and it was unique. So, so, so we named uh, after that. And we made a f first analysis. Uh, uh, Introductionary analysis, technical analysis about that before sharing any information with big vendors, AV companies, and so on, because we were frustrated. Uh, we, we found that the Duku is related to Stuxnet, not exactly knowing uh, on what scale. We expected that most likely the same guys are behind it, but it is absolutely not impossible that other parties just took Stuxnet and made, made another malware that sh sh looks like that and, and they just fight back or something like that. So the concern was if we just uh, tell the raw information that we found something and it is really looks like uh, it really looks like uh, Stuxnet, then no vendor will respond to us because we are a pretty small laboratory in the far uh, Eastern Europe region. Nobody knows about anything about us, so they will discard our messages. And therefore, we decided to make a, a, a detailed technical analysis, the, and the major goal was to, to show this similarity and, and uh, to uh, help others to start more investigations based on our information and to be more rapid. 
so the, uh, the others, the big vendors can uh, easily read our documentation and within hours they can start uh, their own stuff without uh, uh, waiting too much and therefore the attackers, because most likely if we share much information, the attacker will know that they were caught, so they, therefore uh, the attackers might do nasty things, who knows? So the answer should be rapid from uh, every party uh, in the uh, different side. So we made this uh, report, which was actually added to the appendix of the Symantec report uh, and released anonymously first, and later we accepted that we were the lab that shared the information with uh, Symantec and, of course, with all the other uh, third community and so on. And then later we worked on um, Another topic, there was a $1 million question, how they infected uh, the computers with Dukum? Is there any zero day involved and so on? And the answer was that there was a zero day uh, uh, problem in the Windows kernel uh, font handling stuff. Uh, that uh, uh, is really nasty, that means all the Windows versions affected and basically any, uh, any document format or similar, even Windows help files that can have embedded fonts uh, can be used to, to infect uh, computers by, by uh, the attackers. So with the help of the company, we found the document that was used to attack uh, the company. And uh, uh, then our problem was not so much technical. We had to prove that this is zero day and this is a, a, really an attacking document. But there were other problems. And 80% of our, our uh, job or, or what we did is generally administrative stuff. Like uh, here, the problem was that the, the, the exploit, this document that, that was used to exploit the computers was based on a company document template or something like that. So it actually contained victim name. And the, and the victim wanted to remain anonymous, so it's a, a big problem how to modify the exploit code to get rid of the, any information that can reveal the identity of the victim, but still having a working zero-day exploit that nobody understands what, what is going on. So anyhow, um, we, uh, with the other partners like Symantec, Microsoft, we, we actually uh, were able to handle the situation, share information with Microsoft, made, make an anonymized version of the exploit. Microsoft patched the systems uh, and, and uh, they were saved. Uh, so we also worked on a Duku de de detector toolkit because uh, we saw that uh, antivirus tools are not so good uh, because most of them use signature-based approaches and we tried to uh, formalize our thoughts how we could find other uh, pieces of uh, other versions of Duku or related malware. Like uh, uh, both Stuxnet and Duku used uh, sp uh, special files in the, the inf directory of the Windows uh, directory that uh, uh, generally has an entropy not so high, but these files had a big entropy. So we made a generic tool that finds any strange file that has too much entropy in this directory. Uh, and at the end, it came out that uh, in most cases, so for Duku we know only about 20 victims, they use the different file name and so on, but with our tools in most of the cases uh, you are able to find it out that, uh, okay, this is also a Duku, uh, Duku, Duku instance, but we don't know if uh, in the, those cases our tool was used or not to, fi to find it, but it was more a demonstration and a prototype about uh, uh, new approaches, how to, to mitigate similar issues. Later on, uh, last year in May, we worked on the flame malware. Uh, we don't uh, tell exactly how. Uh, we worked in an international collaboration to investigate a new malware. And first, uh, uh, the Maher Center CERT of Iran uh, disclosed information that the, the, they are investigating a malware called Flamer. And on the next day, we released a, a detailed technical document, 60 pages about the Flame. We called it Sky Viper malware. And Kaspersky also released details about their work on, on the Flame uh, malware. Uh, there were other small uh, cases, like uh, we made some polydot detector for Gauss, but I don't talk about that because it, it, we don't have uh, enough time. And uh, again, still at the interaction, we worked on uh, two. Uh, sorry, too, too fast? Okay, so if we have time, I, I'm happy to share. So, so uh, we, we found Duku, we analyzed Duku, we found the dropper, that's easy. We made the Duku detector toolkit. Interestingly, later on next year in February, the last and, and the only Duku version was found that was made after revealing the, the, the existence of Duku. 
And it was just after, two days after we made a new Duku, Duku detector toolkit. Uh, you can expect that maybe somebody found the new version of the detector toolkit, but uh, in fact, most likely it was not the case. But it seems like this new version, uh, although not, not every part of the new version is available or, or was available, uh, tries to uh, hide itself against the detector itself. So it was also designed. But, but this is trivial. So if you make any tool and they expect that uh, the, your tool will be used, then they try to modify until uh, it won't be detected. They, they want to be under the radar. And uh, then we refreshed our, our toolkit to be efficient against the modified version. And later on, nothing happened on Duku. We, we did not see any attack on that. But we found Flame uh, in May. Uh, as I said, the three uh, uh, disclosures were about that, Iranians, Kaspersky, and us. And uh, after Flame, uh, Kaspersky found uh, some other versions, not versions, but other uh, code, malware, that is very, very similar to Flame, but they are different. One is Gauss. Uh, Flame was used to collect information in the Middle East uh, in the number of something like 10,000 hosts, so mass information gathering with big code. And Gauss was also used for that, but uh, for Flame, the victims were most in Iran and 25% in Sudan. For Flame, it was more in Lebanon and uh, similar places uh, for, for Gauss. And Gauss was more about collecting information about how the money flows between banks and people and so on. So it was more about uh, getting information about uh, uh, the money. Uh, and strangely, uh, Gauss installed a specific font file, which we, uh, they called Polida, which is most likely a modified Lucida Bright font. Uh, on, and it, it was installed on every computer that was infected by uh, Gauss. And we don't know why, so it does not have any exploit inside, uh, so why? Uh, and one idea, that there can be others, is that uh, maybe they used it to remotely detect if a computer is infected or not. And we used the same trick. If you make a, a cascading st style sheet uh, with fonts inside, you can set uh, URLs uh, where the font can be downloaded if your computer does not have it. So if we create a web page that the client downloads and we see that they are downloading our font, then they don't have the font installed and they, uh, they are clean. If they don't download the font, then two cases are possible, or three, error, uh, or uh, they uh, don't download the font because they don't want, like um, they use text-based browser, whatever, or the third is that they, they, they are infected. But with some cross-checks with other fonts, you can find out if, if somebody is infected or not. So we made a, a web page-based service where you can check if you are infected. But basically, it is technical mean, by, by technical means, it is trivial. You can open up Word and check if Polida font is installed on, on your computer. But still, many, many uh, users used it because the press uh, made a hype about that, although it was made in two hours or one hour, so not, not a big deal. And uh, we also made a Gauss info collector because one interesting uh, property of Gauss was that there is uh, some hidden code inside encrypted by RC4 uh, that it cannot be cracked uh, because the key is long enough and, uh, and the, the key is, so the mother tries to decrypt it based on information that is stored on your computer. So it takes your path and it takes your list, uh, directory listing of the program files uh, directory with some tricks and tries to combine some stuff and make MD5 hashes of uh, the specific parts and tries to dec dec decrypt the, the uh, file with the, these MD5s. And we don't know what should be in the path or the program files. It is specific to only one victim or uh, who knows, maybe uh, a, a, a series of victims or a group of victims where they actually put something in the path or they use specific software that is likely to be only available in the Middle East or similar. We don't know exactly. But uh, there are many investigations about that. What we made is that we try to get more information about uh, what people uh, have in the program files and uh, directory and the path. So anybody who downloads your tool, it automatically runs on Windows and sends to our server to a database uh, information about your computer if you are volunteering in this. And we try to collect information uh, to be able to decrypt these uh, payloads, these mysterious payloads. 
not yet successfully, uh, so no success yet uh, about that, but again, it is more a prototype we are from the university anyway. Uh, what was more interesting in this year is that Kaspersky and Symantec uh, uh, had a copy of a Flame CNC server and they deeply analyzed and uh, detailed much information about that. And one thing is missing, Mini Flame, because I will talk about that. That is another version or, uh, of, of, of the Flame family or the other piece. And, uh, that is very similar to, to Flame, but it is much smaller and can more, uh, more, more configurable for uh, how to get data and controllable by the attackers. Because Flame is essentially not something where, where the operator sits and selects what to download. It is a mass tool for mass infections and mass data gathering. Uh, uh, Mini Flame is more about uh, hand uh, uh, manipulating computers, but not that much. We will see it uh, why. And two stories we worked on uh, this year is in February. There was a very interesting case called Mini Duke. The basis for Mini Duke was uh, another malware which is called Ita Duke. Ita Duke for, is for Italy in, uh, uh, because it contained uh, Italian uh, pieces of text. And Duke is because similarity to Duku code, but uh, we think that uh, they are not the same uh, behind that. Uh, and this was found by FireEye, and, and it contained a zero-day exploit, a PDF exploit, uh, or Acrobat Reader exploit, uh, uh, that was really novel because it circumvented the sandbox mechanism of the uh, latest uh, PDF readers but not fantastic because uh, sometimes it failed uh, to work, especially with computers with low, low amount of memory and so on. Uh, but the, the, the interesting thing was uh, after one week after FireEye found this, because somebody, not only one, but three people uploaded uh, files to virus total to check that contained the same zero-day PDF stuff, but a totally different model. And the first, uh, first guy who uh, uploaded this information was actually a Hungarian one. And uh, therefore, uh, Kaspersky con con contacted us to work together on the issue and find out what is going on and who is this mysterious Hungarian guy. The two guys after that were from uh, Belgium and Luxembourg. And the files they received, the first guy received some information about a seminar on uh, civil rights or something like that, uh, something uh, similar. And the two others were one for uh, Ukraine's foreign policy and the other is Ukraine's NATO membership. Uh, and that, that is strange because the attackers generally send out documents that uh, uh, somehow relate to the victim. And in this case, you can expect that maybe there is a librarian who wants to know more about Ukraine or politicians who decide about the stuff. So it should be interesting if, if, if somebody tries to attack politicians or, or similar organizations. And therefore, we, it, it was a very, very rapid investigation. Uh, we took, together with Kaspersky, it took only one week, including notifying NATO, thirds, uh, notifying press and AV companies that takes uh, days, um, and also to, to catch uh, all the information that is available. Uh, and the most interesting story here was, not, again, not, not that the marvel, uh, the sophistication of the marvel was interesting, but the operation and what, what is happening. We were able to obtain information from the command and control servers, uh, the, the IP addresses of the victims. And for many, half of the IP addresses were like ADSL lines who, where you can, cannot do too much. You can report to the government, maybe they can find out if they are important targets or not, but it is slow and we, we cannot decide about that. But for the other uh, half, uh, there were relevant uh, who is information available. So by who is or reverse uh, DNS lookups, you could identify what is this organization that was attacked. And for, for these about 30 organizations, it was just foreign ministry in this country, foreign ministry in that country, uh, defense uh, kind of organization in other country, uh, parliament, congress, uh, uh, and, and similar. So it was really shocking when we saw that, that, that uh, all the victims are really, really uh, important uh, targets. Even the NATO was attacked. That, that, that was. Uh, so uh, the problem is that I can talk uh, hours about that, and uh, still we are not at the topic. So
So, uh, for, for NATO, the, the interesting topic was that I, I told to the journalist of writers that uh, we notify NATO, and he asked why. Um, I said, we don't know about any involvement of the NATO, but there are so many countries attacked in, within NATO and high-level organizations that you can consider maybe that this is something, an attack against NATO itself or something. So why not notify NATO about the issue, especially if here in Hungary we have an organization, NSA, Hungary, not that NSA, it's something else, uh, uh, National Security Authority, that is the official contact point to NATO, so we can send the information through that. And, uh, and the, the, then the, the journalist went away and, and uh, wrote a paper, uh, uh, and, and what was written is that we called NATO if, if they were really attacked, and they said no, but the, later on uh, the guy uh, called back the journalist and said I was not fully uh, good in, or uh, it was not fully right information, but I cannot disclose uh, more about the story. So even NATO got some uh, uh, similar emails. Uh, not just most likely, but, but for sure. And I, I guess I, I told most of the, uh, the, the information that is needed now, and uh, later you can ask about this uh, if you want. Uh, and uh, just one month later, we worked with the Hungary, again, the, the, the official NATO contact point, but with what I told, National Security Authority of Hungary, because uh, um, an investigation was already ongoing that somebody attacked Hungarian diplomatic target and stole information from that high-level uh, target. Uh, and they found some traces and so on, and, uh, and uh, worked on the, the case, and they asked for our help, but not in that mean that they cannot solve the issue, but we have much more uh, connections, um, uh, experience about how to handle this, how to, to make trust relationship on the issue, and to find out if it is just a, um, an individual case or something more. If it is like a cyber criminal gang just went over the internet, hacked 1,000 people, and incidentally they found some important target and uh, withdrawn files, or they specially uh, target uh, high-profile targets and, and try to steal uh, the information they exactly wanted to steal. Here, uh, the investigation revealed a number of command and control servers, uh, uh, pieces of code is in a number of 50 or 100 different small pieces uh, of malware-related components, and uh, victims in the number of hundreds or thousands, uh, going back to, to 2004. So uh, these operation, uh, this operation is more than eight years long. And uh, from the data we obtained, uh, it is more likely that almost all of the cases are targeted, uh, not, not just criminal gangs or, or just uh, uh, attacking by luck. So these were the most interesting cases we worked on, and now about the exact topic, what, what I, I uh, told you to talk about, is how, uh, of course, you can extend this list, but the basic question is how to make our own zero day without working on zero days. So let's take uh, the, the others zero day and use it by, our, uh, by us to deploy our malware. Um, if we cannot really make a malware, how to take others' malware and use it for our goals? And uh, 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 some information about the uh, Duku Keylogger. And for exploits, uh, we will use two of them. Uh, one is for, for, from Duku, and the other is uh, abusing the Flames Windows Update uh, uh, exploit mechanism. I think I already told about that, that uh, kin uh, man many are happy about that. Okay, uh, uh, kinetic attacks are, are hard to deploy, they are expensive, so much more easy to write some piece of code and nobody get hurt. Uh, and so it is much better to use cyber attacks because they are cheaper and so on. But uh, if a plane, an F-16, crashes here in the fort, then I, I won't be able to reconstruct it and uh, copy it in 1,000 pieces or, or even to understand what are the materials inside the plane. But if some code uh, is infecting my computers, I have more chance to analyze it and copy it for my own goals. And th that is the basic idea behind that. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, there are a number of different tools that can be used for, for uh, checking this, but uh, I went to the easiest ones uh, to, to, sh to, to show how easy it is uh, to insert or uh, to abuse these tools. 
The first case is uh, let's abuse this Doku, Doku uh, dropper font exploit mechanism and put our, our uh, malware into it and, and, uh, and, uh, and check if it is possible. So Doku dropper was a doc file. As I mentioned, um, uh, other file formats are also possible to use uh, the same trick. Uh, the font exploited Windows kernel uh, vulnerability and in fact, the, the exploit is very complex because you need kernel level uh, code, kernel shell code. Uh, in the kernel level, if you make a failure, then the system will crash. So that is not good. And we are not so professional, so we want to, to not to modify too much about the exploit code, just abuse uh, um, as. Uh, few, so modify as few uh, code as it is possible and, and not to, to uh, do too much on the stuff. And we don't even want to understand how it is working because they, they were professionals, they made a professional exploit that does not crash on any computer, so uh, don't, don't uh, modify it, but uh, try to abuse it. So the doc document contained an embedded font file, which was called Dexter, and that contained uh, the exploit. It is very complicated uh, uh, exploit. It abuses uh, bitmaps when uh, a composite bitmap is used for helping the font engine to render fonts in very small font sizes. Uh, then there were specific problems, and they used glyph routines to modify uh, PC, uh, pieces in the memory. So it is really complex. Uh, so, so most likely, we do, don't want to understand uh, the exploit, especially let's consider that the guy who makes my duty is in the Middle East. He, they found that they were attacked by Duku, and they want to fight back. And they don't understand everything about exploitation, but uh, they, 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 they can modify some bits because uh, that, that's easier. OK, so the, the, the exploit has a number of stages, in fact. So like, uh, the, the, after all these belief routines uh, are uh, over, then uh, the execution, the IP address uh, uh, goes to, not IP address, but EIP is at a specific location and it starts to run a first stage or zero stage, uh, the decryption code. So it is just a very short code for decrypting other parts of the model. Then uh, the real first stage makes initia initializations in memory, uh, allocating memory and similar, and decompress the stage two code. Stage two code still has kernel uh, driver to load uh, user space co uh, page, user space uh, code to uh, specific processes. Then this user process is started by this driver uh, in some process. This injects the, the next stage into some other process, uh, which installs the malware on the computer uh, and uh, creates some. Uh, stuff and this is uh, the, the malware is stored in here in uh, a compressed uh, fashion and so on. So this part is fully compressed, and what I, I did, I replaced only these two because I don't have to take care about all the kernel level stuff. Uh, even don't care about how to inject uh, the stuff into processes, but I just uh, take this piece and, and modify it. That looks very easy, but there are concerns. Uh, you, to, to make it, you have to exact, find the, the, the way to erase the specific part and put it back into ma the model. And as I said, uh, the other stages were encrypted, I'm not fully sure if uh, 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 that all, all were encrypted or not, but, but maybe you should do it. No, this part was not encrypted, but compressed. And the decompression is uh, done in the kernel space. So if I, if I want to put my own stuff here, either I should modify this stage to avoid compression or change the compression routine, or I have to find a way to compress my own malware and put it here. But to compress here my malware, I have to understand what compression tool is used. Because what is generally done by the AV industry is they don't want to understand how the decompression function works. 
they just run it on the code and then they have the uncompressed stuff. But if I want to uh, put my own stuff here, then I have to understand how to compress something that will be, uh, that, that will be uncompressed by the function correctly. So the, this, this was the hard stuff, let's say, uh, hard stuff, let's say. Um, here is the compression routine that I found in uh, the Duku, the decompression routine, just uh, some assembly code. And uh, I checked Google to find out similar code, and I found this one, which is ob obviously not the same, but the, the values like we uh, shift here with the uh, B, then we have a multiplication, uh, like here we also have one, then we have this uh, magic number 800 here, and again a shift by 5, so it looks similar. And this is LZMA code at a specific web page. Uh, the, the URL is in the, the uh, file if it is needed. But there are uh, differences as well. So when I try to run LZMA, it is so first you decompress the stuff, then you can try any compression algorithm to, to check if uh, co after compression it will be similar to the original one or not. But this did not work, and, the, the, and uh, I didn't know why, but later on I found that the dictionary size of the ASIMA compression was modified, so it was not the, the, the most basic, the default one, but if you take the ASIMA.exe, uh, which is a prototype implementation or, or basic implementation of ASIMA, and you use these two options, then you can, ex uh, uh, you can repro uh, reproduce this, uh, this uh, uh, Compression function. So I took uh, uh, the original. Uh, no, uh, yes, uh, it is the original compressed code that was found in Duku, and the other part is the reproduction. When I compress something with uh, SEMA and how similar they are. Uh, in this tool, uh, this slider shows uh, the differences. When there is something green red, then there is some different difference. And only here at the header we have some few additional bytes that was put by the ASIMA tool. Uh, all the others are the same. And that, that also means that uh, uh, if I use this tool to create my own code, I have to modify these header uh, bytes and, and uh, remove them, and then it will work. We had another issue. We already knew that the malware is not active after uh, a given uh, time, and uh, somehow it checks uh, uh, these, uh, the, the actual date and is not active after that. So if I really want to remake this malware and I analyze for a longer period of time, then I, then I have to find this activation limit and modify it. In fact, uh, Kaspersky made some analysis on that uh, 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 back in uh, 2011, and uh, even said, uh, uh, so interesting is, is, uh, is that they said that they have some sample, and our sample is different because our sample was active from August 2005 till August, uh, November 2023 which is a very long time period, so therefore we don't have to modify the dates, as, uh, it, it will run. But uh, I, we all, always said that it, 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 it is not valid because the malware is not active after a given time, so if, it, if you check it, setting the clock to October 2011, it won't be active. So uh, even if they are right that there is this kind of checking, it is not the only checking for, for the date. And it was not documented, in fact, until I made this presentation, that there is not a, another check in some of the stages, I don't know exactly, I don't remember. I did not even have, the, uh, I, I, uh, when I, I found these checks, I could not un actually fully understand how it checks and where is the related code. Uh, but the trick is, again, you, if you see similar stuff, is this z not 0 cc is generally a 64-bit date, so for, from reading right to left, and another date here. So once you see something strange, a data structure, you don't necessarily need to understand it fully, but if you just put these two numbers into some conversion tool to find out what, what, uh, what are the dates, if they are dates, then you get that uh, the, the malware will run only from uh, the 11th of uh, August till the 19th of August, so one week only. 
So, and uh, after I found this, I just uh, modified the dates to be far, in, far enough to me, and that's it. I don't really care about how it works. This, this is the easy job. But, as I mentioned, this was not disclosed. So there, is, uh, there are many interesting things disclosed about all these marvels, marvel, pieces of marvel, but they are not uh, fully right, or some parts are not fully disclosed to be uh, efficient uh, uh, remaking such attacks. just very very close to the date when they sent out the specific targeted mail. So, but, 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 but there must have been some kind of action, like during this time frame where this type of attack made sense for someone, right? Um, yeah, but, um, so it was just one week, uh, so, so they sent out an, an, an email and they wanted to be sure that it is active only for one week beginning from when they uh, send it out and ending one week because if later somebody goes back to, for, uh, to uh, uh, test all the mails by automatic techniques or something, they won't run and therefore uh, they, they will be under the radar still. So this is most likely the reason. In fact, they attacked the victim company two times. One time around this date and one time uh, around this day, the second day, one, one or two weeks, weeks later. Because it looks like this group is uh, working in the, the following uh, way. They first attack the victim and wait. They collect information by the automatic tool, uh, but, but they don't actively uh, go to servers or similar. They just want to understand how the security infrastructure works, what is going on, and after one week they decide, okay, if, uh, what are the important targets, and they do the attack. Uh, the uh, actual tar uh, active attacks uh, uh, orchestrated by real operators. Uh, at least we think uh, to be so. And the, the, some other, uh, even the mother had a, a suicide deadline, 30 or 36 days, two versions. So if they uh, lose, uh, if, the, if, if the connection lost between the CNC server infrastructure and the malware on the, uh, the, the victim, then at the end they, it will erase itself. So uh, this way again, nobody will found, find it uh, uh, if the investigation takes some time and so on. And m most likely these are the reasons why they could really uh, be hidden for, for so long time. Oh, I mean that they use this for, for years or who knows how long. So. Basically, this was it, and I have some video. I hope it will work. So, once I created the specific font file uh, that, that can be used for, for our goals, I just make a presentations that uh, I install this font file on a computer, and I, I am just making that, that uh, document that uh, can abuse uh, the computer. So I just made a smiley, I change it to the font size 4, change to the font uh, type Dexter, and that's it. Your computer is already infected, but the, there is a specific delay in the malware that it will only uh, do the bad things if you leave the mouse and the keyboard inactive for 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes it gets really activated, and I installed this specific uh, big malware code, like uh, starting uh, the calculator and uh, telling that I am the Dukum uh, malware and so on, and some, starting some additional uh, calculators if you really want to calculate lots of uh, things. Uh, uh, and that's it. Not, not a big deal, of course, but uh, this is it. Okay. So, this was the first case. I don't have my mouse. I got it. <laughs> yeah. One other really interesting exploit was the Flames Windows update exploit uh, stuff. It is uh, really an extraordinary st thing because it is not just a single piece of exploit, it is a system, let's say. Uh, Flame abuses the Windows update to install Marvel components. Uh, 
they created some cabinet files that are downloaded from Windows Update Server, and these cabinet files are modified. How it go, uh, works? Uh, when my computer starts a Windows update process, it goes for Windows proxy auto detection, even if it is turned off in Internet Explorer. It detects uh, the Windows, uh, the proxy servers in your subnetwork. They created a computer that answers, I am the proxy server, the first infected computer in the subnetwork. We don't know how they infect the first computer in the subnet. And uh, then the Windows update client will go to this server, is there any new update? And they will, sell, uh, they will uh, uh, say, okay, we have some update for Windows update itself, and here are the cabinet files and information how to update yourself. And this update contains malicious code. Uh, pieces are original, genuine Microsoft files, but uh, there are some modifications and uh, uh, a first stage of a malware inside. This first stage, or something, a loader, an in installer, that is uh, uh, started, executed during the Windows update process, is then, con trying to, uh, is then uh, connecting to MS Home, blah, 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 uh, computer to download. Uh, uh, um, and the next stage, the, the big, the real flame mother. And the, the, the reason for this is that they, in this way, they don't have to modify the cabinet files if they, if they modify the version, only the, the big malware that was served from some victim in the network. And uh, yeah, and it is done by HTTP download and so on. Uh, the cabinet files are actually signed. Signed by Microsoft, uh, signed by uh, keys that have certificates that are originating from Microsoft uh, Certificate Authority. Uh, how they did that? First of all, there was a problem that uh, Microsoft Terminal Server, uh, ser Terminal Services uh, software uses Certificate Authority for licensing stuff to give out uh, licenses to, to users. But this is uh, originating from, uh, these certificates are already originated from the root Microsoft certificates and actually can be used for sign code. So they give out certificates to anybody to sign out code, sign, uh, sign code basically. So that was a big mistake. A second, these, these certificates were using, or the system was using still MD5 hashes to, to, to be signed years after uh, it was broken. And, uh, uh, and so somebody actually uh, made uh, signatures on these cabinet files, but not just by uh, getting some, signature, uh, some certificates from Microsoft, but they made some hash collision because the uh, original certificate, uh, although it was uh, um, possible to use for code signing, but there were specific ext extensions, critical extensions in the certificate. And uh, if uh, the client does not understand the goal, uh, goal of these Hydra extensions in the certificate, it stops and does not accept as a valid certificate. But this was valid only for Vista and Windows 7. So they could not infect Vista and Windows 7 computers by the original certificates. They had to get rid of the Hydra extensions that are in, in uh, the certificate. They, so they modified the original certificate only with some bits so that the MD5 still matches, but it can be used for creating a, a valid digital, digital signature on the cabinet file. The problem is that they had to make a, a collision, MD5 collision. It was already demonstrated with, I, I don't know exactly, uh, 200 uh, PS3 computers uh, in three days that uh, somebody can make one uh, collision. But here the, the problem was that the license, uh, the computer that creates the certificate is at Microsoft. And uh, some information uh, is, uh, should be uh, already known to make the, the uh, uh, collision. So you, you cannot make the collision after you get the certificate and try to make it. You have to know exactly what will be in the certificate, and for that you can try to, uh, to make a collision. And that means that, for example, there is a serial number and a date with microsecond level precision, uh, the date time, uh, in the header of the certificate, and you have to guess what it will be. And most likely you cannot really guess in the, that precisity, pr uh, precision. And therefore, uh, it is most likely that the attackers had to make 
collisions in the number of hundreds or hundred or hundred thousands, and you cannot uh, you cannot do that on uh, some uh, PS3s at home. So most likely they had advantages in how to crack MD5 and be computation power to, to make this attack, although nobody exactly knows uh, what happened, even not Microsoft, because it was a black box for, for them, this wall, wall, wall stuff. So my idea is to modify, use, uh, abuse uh, Windows Update Exploit, take the original cabinet files, do not deal about uh, signature or whatever, I just want to use uh, the original stuff to load my malware module on all, all these computers, which is quite easy. Just take the cabinet files, make Windows Proxy Auto Detection Server, put it there, uh, put uh, the, uh, some computer with his name on the network and, and send my own code. Looks uh, easy, but uh, we have some problems. First of all, we need the original cabinet files. And for Flame, uh, two days or I don't know, two weeks later than we found Flame, the, the, the cabinet files were already known and disclosed that uh, the cabinet files can be used for this and that. And samples uh, are uh, available to obtain uh, information. But it is not disclosed uh, how uh, the cabinet files are stored in the uh, malware and the, uh, the cabinet files are not that public. I mean that they are there, but you cannot really just copy it. So you have to understand how to get, they get, the, they get the cabinet files from the, uh, from the malware. And the cabinet files are actually uh, encrypted in the malware and uh, put in a specific uh, uh, table format. This is the cable of, uh, that is used by Flame, and again, this is not published yet. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, one company published uh, some information about the table format. They, they, they also said that later on we will disclose more details. So I had to understand how this table ver works. Basically, we see strings here, the UTF strings, that, that is easy, but there are a lot of other stuff and like these R's and so on. The trick is that it is not... Uh, um, uh, uh, a format like a key value pairs. It is that, but, but in not in that sense. So uh, there are records that are either keys or values. And keys have a reference to values. Uh, for, so, like, um, uh, this is the uh, 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 beginning of the re record. It says it is an integer. Then, here is the length. It is four bytes length. Here is the integer itself, so it is three. And there is some check uh, 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 the code after the identifier or something I don't, don't fully understand. So this is just a value that I am three. But we, for, for understanding this, you have to find another record like here. Uh, we have this uh, name field. Record type three. Uh, this is the, the length. Then, oh, oh, oh. here is the a pointer. 27 means that from the beginning of the file, 27 is the record who, who I am pointing to. So, so this name, security.bad product type, uh, refers to an integer that is in a different uh, uh, part of the file, which is kind of interesting. I don't know what is the reason for doing that. Maybe you, they use some proprietary tool, or, or it is um, um, good in the memory, so easy to manage, uh, to manage this type of uh, uh, information in the memory, and they just dump it easily to, to files, these tables. I, I don't fully understand. Another oddity is that uh, they use these R characters R in some, some other file formats. It is not R anyhow. Uh, the, uh, for padding, but not padding to something normal. They pad to the multiplier, so something multiplied by 13. So not 16, not 8, something to uh, 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 multiply by 13. That, uh, that was also strange. So it, you, you can really debug it, but uh, it takes time because you think you are not normal if you find something like that. I don't know the exact re reason again. So this way you understand uh, that uh, how this uh, table looks like, and then you can find the cabinet files. The cabinet file is here, it is type 4, it means the binary, here is the length, and here is the actual 
cabinet file beginning in the, the table. You can now save it. But it is still encrypted. So we have some five files, and we know that uh, it is encrypted by RC4. And Kaspersky even disclosed that uh, the key length is 104 for uh, the encryption. But what is the exact key? Because it was not published again. So to get the, the cabinet files, you have to find the key itself. And actually, the code uh, contains a 100-byte key somewhere. So I, I and and uh, is this or is it a mistake that they said that it is 104 or what? What is going on? And in fact, the 100-byte code was extended by four additional bytes, which are set to zero. I don't know why. So um, I have uh, idea, of course. The, the thing, is, thing was that uh, most likely they wanted to uh, make uh, key diversification, so to, to use different key for every cabinet file, but not uh, changing the whole big key for every file, just changing these four additional bytes. And this was designed by somebody and implemented by somebody else who made it to zero zero zero. Uh, and uh, this is why uh, this looks so odd. Uh, anyhow, so finally we got, got the key. We can uh, uh, decrypt the information. Uh, still, I will have some slide about that. See, okay, we know that it is RC4, but uh, you know, no, forget it. So my test uh, was uh, run on uh, Linux. I made a in the middle uh, attack server, Debian bind, Apache, PHP, whatever, so the basic infrastructure to just grab the Windows proxy auto detection information, answer back uh, normally, and then send, uh, send the cabinet files, and so on. One interesting thing uh, during my work was that uh, with this trick, with this Windows auto update trick, essentially you can infect the whole country if you have a tap on the, the uh, internet which is bad, uh, and uh, if somebody takes flame and understands how it works, they can use it against us as long as it is zero day, and that is again bad. But uh, this exact trick with these cabinet files does not work in the internet scale, because they, uh, they, with this uh, first stage, they go for this computer in this form, they don't put any dot or something in the, the uh, end, so they, it won't be uh, asked on DNS, only on NetBIOS. So it will be local, because if it is asked by DNS, then it goes through the, the, the whole uh, chain, and, and you are able to really attack a whole country even in, uh, a door. But this way, you remain in the uh, in your network. Uh, or it uses DNS only if you have uh, uh, suffixes defined in, uh, in, in in your DNS settings, but it is not. That generally. So what you see is just NetBIOS queries, and therefore uh, this has limitations. But that is also interesting. This limitation is most likely not uh, just a matter of luck. They designed it to be uh, to others to not to be able to steal these informations. So they considered that, uh, that they are playing a dangerous game, most likely. And this is one of the things they put in uh, to to have some limitations in in uh, the malware, although it is uh, not guaranteed. Uh, this is uh, one thing. And the other uh, is that I should note, okay, but then what about changing the zero stage in the cabinet file? Then you have to make the collision for what we don't have enough information. So it is basically well protected. You can attack a small network with this information, but, you, uh, but it is limited uh, in this uh, scope. So let's see the video on the Windows update exploit. Actually, there are two videos, two versions. So if you never set up uh, the Windows update and you say, OK, activate it, it will immediately start a new Windows update process in the background. So from the perspective of the, I will show it from the perspective of the user and what the Linux server uh, uh, sees about the, the story. So if you just say OK, here, uh, here is the screen, some uh, downloads are activated on our Linux boot box, then with some uh, delay there is this new query and uh, something happened on the computer. Let's see it again without the Linux uh, stuff. How to infect a whole country in one day or one, one second. It initiates, you don't see anything at all. And you are around. That's it. 
And of course, if you need more calculators, you just click on OK and, <laughs> and then you have it. Oh, my mom. OK. Yeah, OK. So we have two ways to install around Malware, but it is just, it is still just calculating something. So let's make something uh, new. Uh, the SPE is the mini flame I mentioned. It is much uh, smaller than the flame itself. Not that complicated like Duku. So it is a perfect uh, place for having around Malware. And let's create our own command and control server for mini flame. Not even modifying Miniflame, just modify the command and control servers that are hard coded in the Malware, and they will come to us and let's make our own command and control server and, and, uh, and uh, uh, tell, the, tell the clients what to do. Uh, the command and control server has a number of commands which were already described by Kaspersky uh, in the report. Strange names like Elvis and uh, similar. Uh, and uh, the communication is encrypted by uh, some encryption uh, with some XOR based one uh, and some two fish based two layer encryption. And this was documentation done by, by Kaspersky that the whole stuff is XOR, the, the whole uh, file, and the, the first two fish also encrypt the second two fish, which is two times two fish and one times XOR. But it was not. So in fact, this, this was an error uh, in the documentation. Uh, it is really an XOR here and really two fish here, but uh, they are not uh, uh, nested into each other. Uh, and you have to analyze it. So without analysis, without, without checking the code, you don't. Uh, even if somebody tells you how it works, uh, that's not so easy to reproduce uh, the stuff. The other thing is that. Uh, 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 I, I think that how the two fish code is told was described, but uh, telling that what is the key and that the algorithm is two fish is not enough. You have to understand what is this, uh, the mode, what is the initial edit vector, and what are the other uh, header fields in the, the stuff, and which were which, which were not published actually. We have some four bytes here, then a sixteen bytes uh, init vector, and the mode is CBC. Not that complicated, but again uh, to to really reproduce the CNC functionality, you have to find this out uh, uh, and, and work with that. So the unencrypted stuff looks like that. Finally, we, get, uh, we uh, were able to make uh, a CNC server that can communicate with uh, uh, encrypted, uh, by, by this encrypted channel. But then we have the problem with the commands. Although it was described what are the basic commands, but not fully described what are the parameters, how many parameters are, and, and how actually they should uh, uh, send. So this was the original command name, continue or error, yes or no, and then other parameters. Uh, like how the like a deadline, how long the the, uh, the, ex the command can be executed, and it took uh, quite a while to find out that the uh, the precise way how to send a command for Sonia command looks like this: please send uh, five or name this, or for Elvis it looks uh, to to. Uh, execute the command, it should like the, this end, and some end of command mark should be put in the end of the command. Again, even if the information is there on the internet, it was not precise enough to reproduce uh, the ball attack uh, uh, only by that. You need some more analysis to uh, really make a working CNC server. One other problem is that finally I was able to make my own CNC server and send commands to the client, but after sending one command, it does not go back to ask for more commands. It waits for more than two hours and only goes back for the next command afterwards. That means it is not really uh, VNC-like real-time stuff, but and, and not very efficient. So, and, and it, it was cross-checked several times. I even tried to use some commands, then, okay, execute this, and then come back to us for, for, for a new command, and it was impossible to, 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 to do it by the mother itself. I had to change this time to two minutes to be useless, useful for, for my, my uh, goals. 
Uh, of course, I, uh, I was able to find it how, how very where this uh, delay is and so on. So it is not impossible to modify it, but still problematic to make. Okay. So here is my modified OCX. I installed it by uh, running run DLL or something, and then I have to restart the computer to, uh, init uh, to initialize the malware. So after restarting within two minutes or something, uh, it will start running and communicating with the, the uh, command and control server. Of course, we won't wait until Windows sh shut down. So here is my small script telling that uh, please uh, run the command to uh, list the directory and similar. I start the TCP dump to check what is going on in the network. We see nothing interesting. Then suddenly something starts after one or two minutes after uh, starting the Windows that communicates. And we see the result of the uh, command running is here. It saved the directory information to a file in, in my computer. Then we make another command like, let's try to download the file from the victim. Again, starting, restarting the computer after installation. Then we run this Sonya. On a, on a specific file that dot zip, nothing important, and we have a local on the CNC server. We have a directory which is which contains this files directory. We, we, we will wait for the file there, so the victim will upload to the server this that dot zip. We wait for the communication. Something happened. And suddenly, there are a number of different files because there are stages of the, the decryption saved in the log files to be sure that uh, uh, to, to debug the, the stuff and uh, some log data as well about the successful running of the code. So it works, but was not that easy as usual. And finally, just some words. It is not so. a different presentation. Ah, this one. Some words about the Duku key logger. So the Duku key logger is a standalone tool that was used to grab keyboard data uh, and information screenshots and similar stuff. And uh, it's a distinct exe file. So nothing much modification need to be done to to uh, to use this tool to grab information and when we found Duku, it was uh, not known by any antivirus man or this key logger. So if uh, the victim takes this key logger, he can start to use uh, on any of the victims. That's good, but the only concern is that, okay, but then they will have data files. And the data files contain the data in a specific format. And you have to understand what is the format, how Duku key logger stores the stolen information. Without that, you cannot use the key logger itself. So th this project was uh, run by my uh, student, who actually tried to understand the, how the Duku key log file, uh, file formats look like, um, especially the uh, screenshots, because the other uh, parts are e more easy to understand and uh, publish, like it is a, a bzipped file with specific parts in it and so on. But the, the, the BMP is really strange, uh, the uh, screen uh, grabber stuff is really strange. It uses uh, 16 color fi uh, fi uh, files, uh, screenshots uh, to be stored uh, as a file. Uh, as a BMP for the initial uh, screenshot, so when it starts up. But after that, it, it makes in increment, uh, so it does not store the whole picture, just uh, saves the changes of the picture, which is pretty normal. It's used by protocols like uh, VNC or whatever. But 
we could not really pinpoint which protocol is used or why it was designed in this fashion. It uses different uh, record formats, and uh, uh, gener generally it uses 8 by 8 pixel squares uh, and, uh, and says that, okay, here is a new square here, the next square is here, the next square is here, then you have to skip 10 squares and the next modification is there, or position arbitrarily that he, here we are and here there is just one pixel change. And for this we have positioning functions, <coughs> pixel values, uh, square stuff, only things squares and similar. And uh, then if you have some picture, we made some analysis, uh, kind of analysis tool that can reconstruct the picture itself. So the delta that was stored in this case was only this. So the, um, status line or something was uh, stored uh, mostly in this incremental file and some pixel, uh, some parts here and uh, this was another test vector test incremental file and putting it together it, re it reconstructed the, the volume which was which was stored by the keylogger so conclusions on one hand, we were able to abuse Duku, abuse the Windows update uh, in Flame, use the SP for our own goals, and the keylogger for, for uh, grabbing data. And it was not a big deal, so let's consider altogether it was, uh, let's say, 100 or 150 man hours to, uh, to abuse these tools based on the publicly available information which can be considered that it is not available at the time when it is zero day or not known, uh, but a considerable time. But on the other hand, we have uh, many problems to, to, to solve. Uh, I already uh, emphasized all these, that it was not that simple. So anybody who says, okay, Stuxnet can be abused, does not understand that to, to, you have to really understand how Stuxnet infects because otherwise you are not able to fully uh, reproduce your attack or modify in that depth that you really can blow up another uh, uh, industrial control system or uh, power station or whatever. And I, what I also said that uh, it is really strange, some design uh, decisions of what were made for these malware tools are interesting and, and uh, maybe the attackers already considered this feedback stuff and, and some of the uh, things were designed to avoid such uh, problems. Okay, so questions, thank you very much. If you don't ask now, you, can, you still have the possibility in the next two days to ask about details or funny stories. No questions now? Um, after debugging features, what have you encountered? Have you encountered nothing. Nothing. No anti debugging. That, that's a good question. So, so um, there are some obfuscation here and there, calling functions by hashes, but it is not just because of uh, to have anti-debug stuff, but maybe this is just general, too general to, to be used. But nothing really special like uh, checking for VMs, uh, obfuscating the code much, and so on. Because the basic idea for these attackers, and that, that makes it perfectly, it makes sense uh, in, in this case, is that they want it to be under the radar. And if, one, uh, uh, if whoever finds the, finds the real malware and so on, on, and begins the real analysis, they cannot stop by uh, obfuscation only. So there, there, there or anti-debug and so on. So it is no use to, to put too much effort into making the, the, the malware perfectly uh, run on uh, having sophisticated rootkit inside, uh, kernel level, BIOS level, whatever. They just wanted to have a malware that is under the radar. And that continues. So uh, I mean, most of the uh, attacks recently, the tools itself are not that sophisticated, not that special. And, uh, but they are designed that if somebody catches them, then we will make another one. So they are going for more, more and more simplicity, more and more code reuse from le legitimate code bases, because you cannot really uh, uh, blacklist legitimate tools or, or modules, and they just put plain, simple uh, uh, malware or, or code that can be easily uh, changed for, for the, a new version. What uh, the other question, or, or that is more interesting in this sense, that 
if we consider some others, we'll have other goals with their malware. I mean, these, almost all of these were for uh, espionage. But what if somebody really wants to blow up, make a terror attack by blowing up power stations in Europe? Then, for example, for him, it will be more important to, to have the attack at a precise time, to uh, blow up all the stuff at the same time or for some reason and so on. Therefore, they will be, use another technique, like they will use more time synchronization inside the industrial network when uh, clocks can be really set up messy because nobody, uh, you don't have NTP or something to synchronize in a nuclear facility, most likely, who knows. Uh, and uh, also, in that case, it is more likely that they will use anti-debug tricks. But in the following fashion, they will install something to a uh, power plant uh, to blow up one week after this installation because they have other work, uh, work to do. And they will be, uh, want to be absolutely sure that in, in, within one week, nobody will be able to understand the threat. So even if the, the malware is found, nobody will understand what is going on on your network. So it is really goal oriented. So if they have, the, uh, so they work like uh, what we expected from them based on their their real goals. If they want to be under the radar, this is the best technique. You don't have to do so, so much obfuscation and anti debug, but you can do uh, other things. If they will have other goals, they then we, they will most most likely behave accordingly. And that is important because if we uh, expect uh, new goals, then we can expect how the attack will look like, and then can, we can design already defense mechanisms to protect against this type of, of uh, attacks. Like for, for this blowing up within one week, you can take a copy of the computer, run, for one, uh, run the clock faster, and if, if within one hour test what will happen in the next month, and if everything is fine, then let's go back to normal. But this is just idea, who knows what will happen. Scalability of this well-designed system. Like which system? So. So this claim thing, or all these government-sponsored systems, they are designed obviously for for efficiency or for yeah, uh, very hard to answer. So yeah. One answer is that, for example, the Duku cannot be uh, scaled too much. They need operators to direct, directly uh, uh, operate the, at, uh, the attack. But at what was uh, seen in these attacks that they fail. They have junior members that, 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 that who, they don't know that. Uh, um, so so the, some of the members made mistakes, like uh, instead of uh, saying export hit, hit size, hist size they put hit size and therefore the history file was saved. Or they tried to, try to trace route to an URL, which is not okay. And later on they used menu, man pages on FTP because they could not uh, use the, the stuff, so. Wait a second, because I, I feel there's a pattern here, like this cognitive dissonance also of DLC 4K, of 100 bytes and 104 bytes. And all these like where you have structures that like like 30 byte long uh, and all these things. How many of these have you put? It seems like the same pattern, right? Like when you see something as a teamwork, yeah, teamwork with definitive duties. Somebody designed. Somebody takes it from the shelf and puts it into this specific malware. Uh, you know. Yeah. And maybe it doesn't be completely the documentation. I, I like the idea of having code that is not conventional. When you look at it, and you have like the size is not 16 byte long, but 30 byte long, or the key is not 128, but only 100 bytes long, or whatever. So, and, and this is like I'm, I'm having completely made up numbers that are completely confusing. I think that actually is a is a, is a psychological and debugging feature yeah. as such. Uh, I think just choosing 13 is, I mean, it, it sends a message to us. <laughs> what question that came to my mind was I mean, what was the exact um, method of um, obfuscation, the delivery path, if the malware sent something to them? And was there any um, concepts maybe developed how to? Um, exploit the attacker by sending him 
something expected to come. But by us, you mean that a uh, counter attacking, or at least yeah. now, um, uh, or approach was not. Uh, we, we try to be under the radar as well, so we, we, we try to avoid any communication with the CNC servers as we, had, uh, we actually expected that state actors are on the other end and we don't, did not want to, somebody to come and knock on the or do door that, uh, okay, this investigation is really interesting, but stop. Uh, after revealing the information and uh, still uh, having the, the CNC servers running, we made some experiment, uh, experiment and so on, but not in that depth to infiltrate uh, fake data and trying to get traces uh, to phone back or sim something. So we tried to check some of the communications and understand it a bit more, but uh, not dealing too much with that. Uh, that, that was the idea at the time. And continuing to the answer for the last question so for scalability, Flame was much more scalable because they attacked 10,000 people, but still there had to be a big team who analyzes that bunch of information to find out what is interesting from us and so on. And for example, what was revealed for, for uh, Stuxnet that uh, uh, it was a joint operation between US and Israel you cannot do it. Okay, let's sit down here at the table, 10 Israelis, 10 US guys. Okay, we have two terabytes of data. Let's analyze it. Oh, I found something about your facilities. Here is, uh, here is my USB stick. So it does not work like that uh, for sure. Okay. Then thank you very much. <laughs>